All right, so this video is all gonna be about strength training and why I think in winter you should do it. And there's, we're gonna go through a couple of studies, but the main thing is this sort of nice infographic. So what you can see here is how much do people improve on the baseline in a time trial? Uh, and it tells you how many weeks they did. You can see most of the times it was two times per week. Now, this is the key thing. So we're gonna look at, you know, elite, well-trained. Uh, I don't know exactly the definitions. Elite and well-trained can be hard to hard to show. Elite, they say, is like, it doesn't really define here but anyway what, what it does mean basically is well trained go backwards here which is a rogue one so not 100 sure why that occurs but let's say the average is sort of like here is five percent that's three percent but you know there's a decent gain on most of these you know two two to five percent let's say so pretty good reasons to know that strength training does work now the thing is the main issue with strength training is that you can't do it during the season it's very hard to do it properly during the season because twice a week with racing, very hard to add up. But what you'll see here on this 25 week on well-trained uh, athletes, now this study is very important. And the reason it is, is because it says in, in season. So what it goes on, and we're gonna read the abstract, I've got the whole paper here, which is nice. But what they do, I will admit, there's not many, the only issue with the study is the number of people is minimal. However, what they do is they do a 12 week preparatory uh, period with strength maintenance. Uh, sorry. So they do 12 weeks of strength training twice a week here. OK, then what they do uh, with this this group is they then do it once a week for the first 13 weeks of competition. So this is pretty, you know, good for an off season. Let's say you start strength training in November plus three months. That's going to January. And then you've got 13 weeks of once a week of gym. And I think most people can do that. Okay, if you've got a stage race for a week, you might have to miss one. However, what this shows is that the the they increased um, the size of the muscle and the one rep max, no surprise. And they also increased maximal oxygen consumption and mean power output. This is the thing. At 13 weeks, so when they just did one session per week, the people who who were doing one gym session a week, the increase in the size of their, their leg and the strength in the preparatory period stayed the same. And that is the biggest thing. So what it means is that with the gym sessions is that you can do your 12 week proper, you know, two times a week. And I think that's that's not too hard to do. And you need, need very minimal maintenance. And I think that for most people means that strength training can be incorporated in a training period. Because I think otherwise it's very hard because you think I'm going to lose the gains. But what this study has shown, and I, again, caveats, it's one study, it's 13 people, it's six people. However, I think it goes to show that if you can, what you really need to do with strength training and what I was saying before, whack the creatine, think you're a bodybuilder, get as big as possible as you can in winter if you want to maximize your strength training. And then as soon as it gets to on season, cycle it all off once a week and that's it. Um, we can read the, the methodology because it's always interesting to see the experiment design just because obviously you want to do exactly the same thing. So we can see the training was mainly it's mainly cycling. You can see as well that most of uh, how the, the zones were split up as well. Um, and yeah, you know, mainly zone zone one and zone two, which is not so, too surprising. Um, but what we will see here is the actual, um, so the, what we want to see is the exercises that they've done, um, which I believe are written over here. So they should be, I'm pretty sure they do a half squat. Uh, they do, yeah, so... No, no, no. Sorry, it's always so hard to find these. So they performed a half squat, recumbent leg press. So that's when you're like sort of uh, the weight is coming from above you. Standing one leg hip flexion, which is like where you sort of lunge up in the air. Um, and and uh, ankle plantar flexion, which I believe is a calf raise. So these are the ones. Ronestad always seems to like to do these ones. I think it's because they're quite easy for people to do. Um, so they the first three weeks, they did 10 rep max. Uh, and then they did six reps. Um, afterwards. But anyway, the testing, which was what they did, was like the thigh muscle, uh, and then they did a blood lactate test and a wingate test and a 40 minute all out TT. So these are the, the exercises you can see. So you can see they did calf raises, this sort of like uh, the hip flexion, squats, and uh, and deadlift as well. Oh, sorry, not deadlift, leg press. So yeah, that's what they did. Um, and then we can sort of go through and you can see all the different types of what they did um, in comparison to their one rep max. Which is good. Um, I could. I don't. I won't be able to leave the PDF, but you should be able to get it. Hopefully, um, if I leave the link to the website, um, but yeah. So really interesting study, and I think for what for me it shows that the strength training you really need to whack early doors. 
Um, this Twitter thread is really useful as well. So I'll link that as well because it's pretty interesting. And the, this again is saying that you really want to push up on the upstroke uh, or sort of like when you're moving up because that's similar to what you do cycling. Um, and yeah, this is sort of the stuff. This all, all stuff is, is really, really useful. Um, so anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you want me to do more like, training videos, then let me know. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one.